Hey, are you thinking of hiring a coach in any area of your life and you don't know how to separate the wheat from the chaff, so to speak? How do you know whether someone is a good coach or a not so good coach? Is there a way to find out? Well, I found a couple of signs of somebody being a good coach. So stick around for that, okay? I've been a coach for about 25 years of my life. I was a voice actor for the past 40 years. And for the past 25 years, I've been teaching other people how to do it as well. And the reason people came to me is because I was a successful voice actor. So that's one, one telltale sign of whether or not somebody could be a good coach. If somebody is successful at what he or she does. I mean, there's people on TikTok that can teach you how to cr get 200,000 followers. And when you look at their profile, they only have 200 followers. That doesn't match, right? So there's a disconnect there. I would not hire that coach. So the person has to be a success in the field that they're teaching. First and foremost. Now, a lot of people who are very successful are not good teachers. So this person needs to have some educational component as well. Needs to be able to explain certain concepts, boil them down to their simplest form and make them into teachable moments. So let's say you have an English teacher and this person doesn't speak English very well. That's a telltale sign that you should not hire that person, right? And if this person can't explain what you're doing wrong, that's another sign. But there's more signs that you need to look out for. I got a call the other day from somebody who wanted to hire me as their vocal coach. And I don't mean blah, la, la, la. Someone who could take you to the stage of the Metropolitan Opera. No, they wanted me to be their voice actor, voiceover coach, their voice acting coach. And I said, I'm sorry. I'm no longer a voice actor because I'm kind of disenchanted with the whole industry. And I, I don't think it's an industry that there's much future in. So I would feel like a uh, someone who's running a driving school, teaching people how to drive and do a dead end street. And that's not me. So I stopped coaching people uh, on how to become a voice actor. But she said, oh my gosh, what do I do now? Because I don't know who is right for me, who's wrong for me. I said, well, have you been coaching yourself at all? She said, yes, in fact, I'm still with a coach. She said, oh gosh, for how long have you been with this person? She said, for the last five years, but I don't think I'm getting anywhere. I don't think I'm making any progress. I said, well, that's revealing. You're, you're telling me that you've seen this person for uh, uh, an hour each week. You're paying them money and you're not where you want to be. Hmm. It's a good thing you're considering a different coach because I wouldn't stick with that coach. Yeah, but we kind of became friends and don't want to disappoint him and la la la. I said, you know what? <laughs> Forget all about that. You're not coaching with a friend. A friend is too nice to you. They won't give you the truth. A coach will tell you what you need to know, not what you want to hear. A coach will tell you what you need to know, not what you want to hear. This person has to be honest with you, as honest as no family member or a friend will ever be with you. So that's, that's one thing to look out for. Do you have an honest relationship where this person can tell you the truth? Because only the truth will set you. Exactly. Said so secondly, a bad coach will make you dependent on them. So you have to go back and back and back and back. They give you the feeling that you don't measure up, that you're not enough. And that's what the coaching industry, if I'm generalizing, which I do a lot, I'm sorry. That's what a lot of the coaching industry is based on. The feeling, giving you the feeling, talking, to, talking you into the feeling that you are not good enough that you need more, that you don't measure up. And I don't think it's that true because a lot of people that came to me for coaching, in fact, I told them after a, a trial session, I said, I don't think you need more coaching from me. There's nothing that I can teach you that you don't already know. But it's time for you to put all the things that you know into practice and start believing in yourself. You don't have a skills problem. You don't need more skills. You need more confidence in yourself more confidence in your skills and that has to come from within I can't tell you to be more confident I can, I can be your cheerleader of course I can give you pep talk but if it's not internalized if it doesn't come from you that's an uphill battle for me if you want to be in a loving relationship and deep down inside you feel that you don't deserve to be loved no coach can change that for you you got to do the work inside it's not an outside job. So anyway, back to my point, a bad coach makes you dependent on them. 
please call me back every week and pay me $250 and you're not getting anywhere. That's a dependent relationship. A good coach makes him or herself or herself redundant. A good coach makes him or herself or herself redundant. Because at the end of the day, you become a solopreneur. You're self-employed. You got to do it by yourself. That's the joy and the, the pitfall of being a freelancer. The buck always stops with you. You need to be your own cheerleader. You need to be managing yourself, your psychological states. You need to manage your clients. You need to manage your jobs. You need to self-direct. I'm not going to be there as a coach. Once you're done coaching, you've got to be able to take the reins without any hand-holding. So once again, a bad coach makes you dependent. A good coach makes him or herself redundant. A good coach will tell you what you need to know and not what you want to hear. Please keep that in mind. I hope this helps.